This is made over four years ago. They have been misleading their child audience for this long. Anyway, the title is called 10 Biggest Sea Dinosaurs That Ever Existed on Earth. What sea dinosaurs? There are no aquatic dinosaurs. Of course this is made by Bright Side, so you know, this is going to be great. <sighs> Come on! I know these sea creatures are also reptiles, but no, they are not dinosaurs. You're now showing pictures of Godzilla! My god, you haven't even spoken wrong facts, and, and this video is going so... why? Jurassic World is not a good source for accurate paleontology. The 10 biggest sea dinosaurs that ever existed on Earth. They, <laughs> sea dinosaurs? There are no sea dinosaurs. Again, there are no sea dinosaurs. You are either being misled or you are aware that you are misleading in other people but, uh, you're still misleading people anyway. The ocean is a pretty terrifying place, filled with sharks, venomous fish, and giant squids, to name a few. But whatever lives in the sea nowadays can't be compared with the huge monsters that dominated the depths millions of years ago. Animals, not monsters. Stop giving them monsters resurrected. Spinosaurus treatment. And by monsters, I mean long extinct marine reptiles and dinosaurs. I don't want to say it again, please. Give me mercy. Since many people are better acquainted with the land roaming giants of the past, this video will open your eyes to those that ruled the waters. I said stop. 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 There are no sea dinosaurs. <laughs> there are only semi aquatic dinosaurs. Lurdosaurus, but, like, come on. There are no aquatic dinosaurs. Stop it, please. Before we dive into the prehistoric oceans, don't forget to click that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. As an official Brightsider, you'll always be in the know when we post something new for you, which is on the daily. 10. Pliosaurus. So I'm not going to complain about them calling these creatures dinosaurs anymore. You, you, you know, you, you, you know, you, you know by now. Like, come on. Why, why is Bright Side so stupid, man? Now, at first glance at this animal, dude, is that a crocodile? Your first thought is probably, whoa, a prehistoric crocodile. Trust me, no one ever thought of a prehistoric crocodile when he first thought of pliosaurs. But looks can be deceiving, because the two aren't really related. Pliosaurus was a genus of eight species belonging to the larger family of pliosaurs. Pliosaurus family? Dude, pliosauridae. Not hard. These prehistoric reptiles were characterized by short necks, massive heads, and broad flippers. Forgot about Attenborosaurus. Didn't you? Pliosauruses lived during the late Jurassic period, around 150 to 145 million years ago. They didn't live to the end of the Cretaceous. Also, that's some goofy ah uh, grammar over here. Their remains were first discovered in Norway in the middle of the 19th century. Norway. Dude, just, just, just don't be fancy. Stick to the UK, please. They certainly were real giants with the largest species weighing more than 30 tons and growing up to 40 feet long. Dude, even people say that Plasaurus funky, aka Predator X, isn't that big. 20 metric tons, dude, not 30. Also, it's 39 feet, not 40. You somehow got the meters correct for Plasaurus funky, aka Predator X, but the feet wrong. Most species of Plasaurus reach eight meters in length and five metric tons while Pliosaurus rossicus reached 10 meters in length and 11 metric tons in body mass. Also, this animal had an incredibly strong bite, 
In fact, it was four times more powerful than that of the mighty T-Rex. When will you stop comparing everything to the T-Rex? If you really want to compare Pliosaurus Bite Force to T-Rex, they're basically equal but varying. Pliosaurus could have more, it could also have less. It really varies, so I'm not sure what you meant by Pliosaurus had a, a Bite Force four times as great as that of a T-Rex. Either way, don't compare everything to T-Rex. 9. Chronosaurus It's quite possibly a Nomen Dubium. Speaking of the Pliosaur family, there's also the Chronosaurus. It had all the typical features of a Pliosaur. A large head with massive jaws, a short neck, and a thick, squarish trunk. They probably lived all over the world given that their fossils have been discovered in both Australia and Colombia. The largest Chronosaurus ever found was 34 feet long from snout to tail. So how is it larger than Pliosaur then? It's shorter. <laughs> and uh, when you, you, you're you showing Chronosaurus as being smaller than Predator X. <laughs> the average chrono is about 10.6 to 12.1 metric tons and about 9 to 10.9 meters in length. So I guess you're, um, so I guess you're technically correct, but, um, still not fully correct. And likely weighed about 12 tons. This marine reptile's teeth weren't really deadly. They were only a few inches long and not all that sharp. Despite this fact, Chronosaurus was a savage and successful predator. Savage. And when will you stop treating predators as bloodthirsty? When pursuing its prey, it could reach super high speeds, and its bite was extremely powerful. 8. Nothosaurus How on earth is something like a Nothosaurus larger than the Pliosaurus or Chronosaurus? How on earth? Dude, you're... You know this, okay? According to fossil evidence, these creatures were relatives of the Pliosaurs and lived about 230. No, they're not even close. The thing that separates them is Pachypleurosauria and Pestosauroidea. And y'all know how different those groups are. 30 million years ago. 230 million years ago? I guess they're not wrong, but um, not 100% correct either. At about 15 feet long, the Nothosaurus wasn't among the largest prehistoric sea creatures, but it was one of the most vicious. So your logic is, vicious equals big. Also, the Nothosaurus, an average one, is about 4 meters in length, while Nothosaurus jangi and Nothosaurus giganteus were around 5 to 7 meters in length. These reptiles had long, needle-sharp teeth that it used to catch squid and fish. Some experts state that Nothosauruses could snap their long heads sideways to catch a passing fish, kind of like how a crocodile does. Surprisingly, researchers say that these reptiles shared a lot of similar features with the modern sea lion. Nothosauruses had four legs that they could use to walk, just like sea lions do. Also, they lived and hunted in the ocean, but could come out on the shore to rest. Finally, experts still can't determine if they laid eggs or actually gave birth to their young. Hence the name, False Lizard. It's a reptile, I'm more inclined to believe that it laid eggs. Also forgot to mention, comparing them to a sea lion isn't the best comparison because the sea lion is a mammal and Nothosaurus is a reptile. 7. Styxosaurus Still smaller than Pliosaurus and Chronosaurus, weighing at around 2.3 metric tons. The Styxosaurus belonged to the Plesiosaur family. It belonged to the Elasmosauridae family. Although, to be fair, um, Elasmosauridae belonged to the order of Plesiosauria, aka Plesiosaurs. And lived during the late Cretaceous period, around 85 to 70 million years ago. Isn't that range a little bit too broad for a Styxosaurus? Upon first glance at this dinosaur, you might mistake it for a sea snake. Does it look like a snake to you? And it'd be an honest mistake. It would be a stupid one. 
Styxosauruses were about 35 feet in length, but over 16 feet of that consisted just of their long snake-like neck. Neck is around 17.2 feet in length. Also 10.5 meters and 34 feet in length, not 10.6 meters and 35 feet in length. They had a comparatively small body and weighed approximately four tons. I said 2.3, four is too big. Their mouths were full of razor sharp cone shaped teeth that they used to catch fish. They didn't need to chew their prey thanks to the 200 small stones called gastroliths in their bellies that probably aided in digestion. 250, not 200. At the same time, some scientists believe that the Styxosaurus used these stones to sink to the ocean bottom in search of particular types of fish. No, they only used their gastroliths to help digest fish. Hmm, looks kinda like Nessie to me. 6. Alberto Nectus Judging by how it's built, it's still smaller than Pliosaurus and Chronosaurus. The Alberto Nectus was another representative of the Plesiosaur family. Dude, you said Plesiosaur family, but you're showing Pliosaur family. Meaning that this marine reptile had a small head on an incredibly long neck and large flipper-like limbs that helped it move through the water. These creatures occupied the sea around North America 76 to 70 million years ago. Your estimate is too broad! The length of this sea monster could reach 38 feet, with its neck taking up 23 feet of that length. 11.6, not 11.5. Its neck was a true record breaker. It had a whopping 76 bones in it. No other animal known to humankind has had so many vertebrae in its neck. Scientists aren't sure why they needed such a lengthy neck. Alberto Nectuses might have used it to collect shellfish off the seabed, or perhaps it helped them capture their main prey, fish and squids. We still don't know, to be honest. This aquatic reptile also had gastroliths in its stomachs. Some of them were as big as five and a half inches in diameter. I'm more than willing to bet that you made that up. Five, Thalazomedon. Weighing at around 4.44 metric tons, the Lastomedon is still smaller than something like Compliosaurus. The Lastomedon means sea lord in ancient Greek, and there's a pretty good reason behind this name. These representatives of the Plesiosaur family were huge predators that could reach 40 feet in length. That's about as big as a four-story building. 12 meters is a great exaggeration. There is a skull of Thalassomedon, uh, suggesting, suggesting that the Thalassomedon could potentially be up to 11.6 meters in length. However, with the, the holotype says it's 10.86 meters, which I'm more inclined to believe on. Also, the fact that you compared this to a four-story building is a crime. Like, visually, you could even tell that Thalassomedon is smaller. Their long, flipper-like limbs could grow up to 7 feet in length. 2 meters is 6.6 .6 feet, not 7. Allowing them to move through the water with shocking efficiency. The Thalazomedon's amazing neck had 62 vertebrae and could be up to 20 feet in length. 19, not 20. That's half its body size. Determining size using mass, I believe that the neck, the neck is still smaller than the body. But uh, I think you meant that the neck is longer than the body, which is correct. Like most plesiosaurs, these creatures had comparatively small heads, measuring just 19 inches. 19 inches is correct, but man, did you, did you oversize that centimeters? Here, let me help you. One inch equals 2.54 centimeters. Hope that helps. But that tiny head was full of long, sharp teeth that reached almost two inches in length. However, these reptiles were unlikely to use their teeth for purposes other than catching prey. Just like other plesiosaurs, their stomachs were full of stones that probably helped with digestion by rubbing up against each other when the gastric walls moved, crushing and grinding up the fish inside. 4. Tylosaurus it really depends on the species, to be honest. If you are talking about creatures like Tylosaurus Pro Rigor, um, you, you, I hope that, I hope that, I hope that I pronounced correct. 
It's around 6.7 metric tons in body mass, which unfortunately is still smaller than Kronosaurus. However, when you're talking about creatures like Talosaurus Saskatchewanensis, it reached 2 metric tons. Tylosaurus bernardi reached 5 metric tons. So if you're talking about Tylosaurus pro rigor, then I guess you could pass that, even though Kronosaurus is larger. However, if you're talking about other Tylosaurus species, for example, Tylosaurus saskatchewanensis and Tylosaurus bernardi, no, you're wrong. The Tylosaurus belonged to the Mosasaur family. It dominated the shallow seas of North America about 85 to 80 million years ago. Dude, you said 85 to 80 million years ago, but you only showed 80 million years ago. Also, your range is just too narrow. This was an enormous predator, with the biggest representatives reaching 45 feet in length. 12 to 15.8 meters, so 13 meters is a reasonable estimate. It had a narrow hydrodynamic body with a blunt, powerful head that the animal used to ram and stun its prey. Wouldn't it just use its head jaws to bite on its prey? Its body was equipped with agile flippers and a long tail decorated with a maneuverable fin. The Tylosaurus was a carnivore, and its diet included not only fish, turtles, and small sharks, but also other mosasaurs, plesiosaurs, and flightless birds. It could have also fed on, uh, it could have also fed on giant squids and ammonites. Uh, am Three, the Shonisaurus. Finally, a creature that actually belongs on the list. The Shonisaurus lived on our planet during the late Triassic period, approximately 215 million years ago. No, it didn't live until that recently. The remains of this creature were first discovered in Nevada in 1920, not far from the Shoshone Mountains. This prehistoric reptile resembled a huge chubby dolphin. It was about 50 feet long and weighed approximately 30 tons. It's the upper estimate of 13.5 to 15 meters. Also weighed 21.6 to 29.7 metric tons. 23.8 to 32.7 short tons. If you if you meant short tons, then it, it's fine. But if you meant metric tons, then you're wrong. About 30 tons, the 30 ton estimate of Shonisaurus which is more than the combined weight of two sperm whales. You're talking about a female sperm whale, largest female sperm whale. Uh, the, the largest female sperm whale would have been around 17 tons. Male sperm whales, uh, <laughs> the, uh, an 18 meter long male sperm whale is 57 tons. So depending on sex, the sperm whale could be larger. There's an even more fascinating fact about the Shoniosaurus, other than its incredible size. This creature didn't have any teeth. Yes, it had teeth. The picture even shows it. What are you even talking about? Researchers figured out that its babies had teeth when they were born, but they fell out as they matured. More recent finds suggest that Shoniosaurus possessed teeth in all ontogenetic stages. One theory suggests that Shonisauruses probably didn't need teeth due to their sheer size. 2. Mosasaurus I'm gonna say this right now, Mosasaurus is tiny in comparison to Shonisaurus. The Mosasaurus is a truly gigantic predator that dominated the seas all over the world about 66 million years ago. Didn't it also dominate the seas from the Campanian? It's not like it suddenly appeared and disappeared out of nowhere. According to fossil evidence, some specimens could be more than 50 feet in length. I hate to say it, but the Mosasaurus is, is shorter than that. Mosasaurus Hoffmanni, 13 meters in length. Some other Mosasaurus species is smaller, like the Mosasaurus missouriensis. This fact makes the Mosasaurus the biggest marine carnivore of its time. You're only talking about Mosasaurus hoffmanni, even then it's smaller than Tylosaurus bernardi. One of the most terrifying things about this creature was its crocodile-like head. Does this look like a croc skull to you? Decorated with literally hundreds of razor-sharp teeth. I don't think it that much teeth. Are you talking about Jurassic Park? 
neatly organized in two rows on both jaws. The thing is that it was pretty challenging for the Mosasaurus to grab its prey in the water. That's why it had all these teeth. Plus, something special, pterygoid teeth anchored to the bones on the roof of its mouth. This made hunting and holding onto its prey much easier. 1. Shastasaurus To be fair, Elite Sickly is not even a reptile at all, so um, yeah, I'm not going to complain about that. The Shastasaurus is the biggest marine reptile that has ever existed. These predators lived during the late Triassic period about 210 million years ago. By the way, Wikipedia got it wrong. It's just late Triassic because late Triassic starts at 237 million years ago. The, the, you're, you're, you said Shastasaurus lived 210 million years ago. Did it vanish? <laughs> did, did it just suddenly appear 210 million years ago and just immediately vanish? It lived for almost... It lived for almost 30 million years, bro. These amazing giants could reach lengths of up to 69 feet and weighed more than 75 tons. By the way, you're only talking about Shastasaurus sicaniensis. Sorry, sorry if I butchered that. The Shastasaurus weighed in around 81.5 metric tons, or at least the sicaniensis species. Pacificus species Shastasaurus pacificus is way smaller, measuring around 7 meters, over 7 meters in length and weighing 1.5 metric tons. This made the Shastasaurus as heavy as a blue whale. Blue whale is still larger. Dude, if a blue whale weighed in 81.5 tons, it would, it, I feel like if, if a blue whale weighs in at 81.5 tons, it must be malnourished all the time. And if you could stand this creature up vertically, it'd be as tall as a seven-story building. Despite appearances, the Shastasaurus was actually pretty slim for its size. Its rib cage was only six feet across. Yeah, only. You'd think that this big guy was chowing down on other dinosaurs. Words can't describe how stupid that statement was. But that's not the case at all. This reptile survived on a diet that consisted of small fish and cephalopods, like octopuses and squid. And that's pretty much it. So in my opinion, this video is quite terrible, but uh, it's not as terrible as, as, the, as, that, um, as that video that was made by Brightside last year. This video was made four years ago, and... Their clickbait has gotten worse over time, it seems. Like, I genuinely found this video not that bad to the point of I don't even know, but um, it's still pretty, pretty, pretty bad. For a bright side video, it's going to be C tier, I guess, but for an average video, um, F. <laughs> not F minus, though. No, can't believe Nothosaurus was placed above Plasaurus and Chronosaurus. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you all in the next one.